Hello, I'm pretty excited about today's devotional, um, entitling it The Waiting Game, as many of us are feeling that we're in that season right now of waiting, whether it's you're working and you're waiting for the other people to come back to work to help you out, uh, you're working from home and waiting for the moment where you can go back um, and be around other people again, you're waiting for kids to go back to school, um, where everybody's in a different place right now where they're waiting. And so what do we do when we're in that area, when we're in this waiting game and kind of our life is on hold, what should we do? And a lot of times in our life, not just in situations like this, where we could feel that we're waiting, waiting to hear from God, waiting to hear uh, an answer to a prayer. Um, so there's a lot of times that we deal with life. I think a lot of times life is just a series of us waiting at different times. And so again, what do we do during this portion of our lives? And so I want to encourage you, we're going to look at Psalm 27. You're going to be looking through the different psalms as we have uh, been uh, having this time together. And this one's Psalm 27. It's a great psalm. And as always, please read it for yourself when we're done. And this is what it says. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? So right away he's saying, I know there's reasons that I have real reasons to be afraid, but to be afraid, but still it's okay to wait. You know, often we are worried and we say, well, if you knew the stuff that I was going through, you would understand my anxiety level. If you understood the things that I was dealing with physically, if you understood the things I was dealing with with my job or lack of job or whatever that I'm dealing with right now, you would understand that I have reasons to be afraid. Well, so did David. David had real reasons to be afraid, but he's saying, I'm remembering who God is and when I look in light of who God is compared to all the problems that I have, there's no real comparison. There's no real comparison. So it says this, continuing on, verse 2, it says, When evil people come to devour me, when enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I'm attacked, I will remain confident. Say, no matter what comes my way, I'm still going to wait for the Lord to help me. No matter what happens, whether I'm having real things that are happening, real things that are coming alongside me, real things that I feel that are attacking me, whether uh, it be, again, uh, physically, financially, socially, mentally, all those other parts that we can feel that are attacking us that are making us feel horrible right now. When we're feeling these things, I'm still going to be okay to wait on God. Verse 4 says this, The one thing I ask of the Lord, the one thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in His temple. For He will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in a sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock, then he will place my head high. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At a sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. I think it's important for us to see how he's waiting during this time. Not only is he waiting and saying, uh, well, I'm not sure what's going to go on. I'm just kind of twiddling my thumbs and crossing my fingers, hoping something changes. You know, this is not what he's doing during this point, this point when he's waiting. See what he's saying. He's saying, I wanted to go in God's temple. I want to be in God's presence. The great thing is what, what Jesus did for us on the cross allows us to have the presence of God at all times. He lives in us. So we already have this. But again, see how he's reacting when he's waiting. He has his head held high. He has shouts of joy. He's singing and praising God. This is how he's reacting during this waiting. This next week is starting up uh, Palm Sunday. In fact, it starts uh, Sunday. And so we have a whole Easter week starting coming up. And a lot of people might be feeling, well, this doesn't really feel like Easter week because it's different than any of us have ever experienced. And Palm Sunday is really a time of shouting for joy and being excited and being happy for what God is doing and, and rejoicing in what God's doing. So you might say, well, right now I don't really feel like rejoicing. I don't feel like being happy. I don't feel like getting into the Palm Sunday mood, whatever that may be. But here, again, David is telling us a great way of waiting, having your head held high, shouting with joy, singing and praising God. This is how we should wait. So we should be excited. We should be excited for Sunday coming, that we're able to celebrate the risen King, the one who died and who lives again, the reason we have our hope, the reason that we can move forward and, and feel dignity and feel strength and know that there is something else that is helping us throughout all these times. And we're not having to go through all these things alone. See, that's why David didn't have to fear. He wasn't doing it by himself. 
continue to have help. And this is what he says. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. It's nice to know that God wants to talk to us while we wait. You know, God is saying, I, I don't want you just to wait there and say, okay, I'm just going to be holding on like uh, you're on hold with somebody, you know, uh, like a telemarketer or something like that, you know, customer service, you're on hold forever, just hearing the music saying, okay, whenever, whenever I can actually get to an actual human being. You know, God has a direct line to us. And so even though we're waiting to see him move, it doesn't mean that we have to wait to hear him talk. We can look into his word. We can pray. We can hear all the things that he has for us. We don't have to wait for his answer in that way. His, his answer, how he responds, we might have to wait for. And that is true. But we don't have to wait to hear him speak his love and his words to you personally. In verse 9, it seems like it has a little bit of a shift here, which I want us to look at. It says, Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O oh God of my salvation. Even if my father and mother abandon me, Lord, the Lord will hold me close. Why is he feeling that God's going to leave him? Why would he feel that God's going to reject him? Why would, why do you feel that at all? Well, I think it's that whenever we're in God's presence, we're going to feel unworthy. We're going to see he's holy, he is great, he's amazing, and we're going to feel unworthy to be in his presence. But because of Jesus, we can enter in. We don't have to feel unworthy. All of us are unworthy on our own. Of course, there's nothing we can ever do that um, makes us, forces God to love us, forces God to say, oh, I want to hear you. No, he does it out of his love and out of his kindness because you're his child. He wants to hear who you are and what you're doing. And he, I mean, he already knows everything about you, but he still wants to hear it from you. And I think that's an awesome thing for us to see that God wants to help him. Uh, verse 11 says, Teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the right path, for my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done. With every breath they threaten me with violence. Yet I'm confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm here in the land of the living. So he's saying, Give me wisdom. I know I have real problems. Give me wisdom and what I should do as these problems are going on. I don't want to just deal with this on my own. Give me wisdom every single day of what decisions I should be making while I'm waiting. Danger is still there, but he knows that God is there too. So why should he fear? And the psalm ends this way. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. So I want to encourage you to wait patiently for the Lord, but do it also as a saying, brave and courageously. You don't have to be living in fear. God doesn't want us to live in fear. In fact, the Bible says that we have, he has not given us a spirit of fear but really of a sound mind and loving kindness that he gives. And this is what he gives to us. And this is what he wants us to see in our lives, that we don't have to live in fear as we're waiting, but we can be courageous and be brave and say, God, what are you wanting me to do while I'm waiting? What is your plan and your purpose right now for me in these moments? And every single day, allow me to pray that and to seek out your will for my life. Now we can say, at the very beginning of the part, the Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? May God shine his light upon you, may he guide your way, may he give you courage, may you have your head held high, may you have shouts of joy, and you sing and celebrate for what God is doing in your life. Let me pray for you. God, we thank you so much that you're with us at all times. God, you're with us always. You care and your love is always there. And God, we know that there is real dangers that people are encountering, whether they're outside and, and out and about because they have to be uh, as essential workers. God, I pray that you would protect people who are out and about. God, I pray that you would mentally protect the people that are in as well. God, I pray that you would financially help people that have lost their job, God, or have had hours cut. And we know how hard it has been on their lives and on their families and, and on them individually. God, I pray that you would help to make ways where there seems to be no way. God, as they're waiting to hear from you as they're waiting to hear you answer their prayers. God, may they see other people come alongside them to help them out. Maybe they talk with other people. God, most importantly, may they talk to you. May they seek you out. And may they seek you out in getting courageousness and bravery, God, and not to look at this thing in fear or to be timid or to allow worry and fear to, to overtake them, God, because that's not what you have created us for. That's not the kind of life that you want us to live. Jesus, you came you live and you died and you rose again so we won't have to live in fear but knowing that you're with us every single day that we have the holy spirit in our lives every single moment gives us reasons not to fear and so we thank you ahead of time for this wonderful gift
You are our light and you are our salvation. May we always remember that and have our heads held high because we are your children. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. So I want to encourage you again, even while you're waiting, celebrate this Palm Sunday. Almost every church I know is online in some uh, sort of fashion, so make sure you check it out. Uh, if you like, you can check out our service, again, Hope Church uh, Midway. You can look at our page. We're going to have a great Palm Sunday that we have planned uh, with our new series called uh, The Rescue Story, so you don't want to miss that. Let's celebrate even as we're waiting because we know that God is still in control, He's still all-powerful, and He's still on the throne. One thing to definitely remember this week and every single week. God bless you. I will talk to you later, and I'll see you on Sunday service.